Good morning. I'm Mike Farnworth, Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General. I'd like to gratefully acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking people and the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. Off the top, I want to thank the vast majority of British Columbians who are following provincial health orders, such as masking up, avoiding large gatherings, and doing an extraordinary job in fighting COVID-19 during this recent spike in cases. We've all made great sacrifices to protect our collective health and to keep our healthcare system functioning safely. While I'm disappointed additional measures are necessary, I am taking further action to carry us through the current spike in COVID-19 cases until more of the population can be vaccinated in the coming weeks. As we've heard from Minister Dix and Dr. Henry, COVID-19 variants have started to take hold in our communities. These variants are spread much more easily and each case has a higher chance of infecting more people. And these cases have led to record hospitalizations and a growing strain on our healthcare system. Things may get worse before they get better. And we need to work together to get through the coming weeks. At this point, we vaccinated more than 30% of our eligible population. And in a month's time, that number is projected to double. But for now though, we need to hunker down and stay local. If we act now, do the right thing, we can still have a summer that is more like those that we're all used to. While the province and the provincial health officer have long asked British Columbians to stay within their own communities, the time has come to formally restrict non-essential travel. That is why, based on the advice of the provincial health officer, I'm restricting non-essential travel into or out of all health authority regions in British Columbia effective immediately. This order will remain in place until after the May long weekend, specifically May 25th. This is a legal order under the Emergency Program Act and there will be consequences for not following it. But beyond that, these measures, most importantly, can save lives and it's in the best interest of all British Columbians to follow them. For the purposes of this order, the Northern and Interior Health Authorities will be considered a combined region and the Vancouver Coastal Health and Fraser Health Authorities will be considered a combined region as well. The boundaries of the Vancouver Island region will not change with, except with some exceptions for the Central Coast, the Bella Coola Valley and Hope. Details on this are available in the news release and on the COVID-19 website. For all regions, people will be able to travel within the region or combined region in which they reside, but not out of their region or combined region. This order is to ensure that people stop traversing large parts of the province. For example, going from Kamloops to Whistler or from Vancouver to Tofino. It will not apply to travel within the defined regions. While this order doesn't stop someone from traveling large distances within their own region, from Merritt to Nelson or Abbott to Abbotsford to Squamish, for example, that doesn't mean that these trips should be happening. Our message on travel has not changed. Do the right thing and stay within the areas that you live. We also need the public to be informed before heading out, even locally. There are some places you simply should not go. Whistler's mayor, for example, is explicitly asking people not to visit right now. We need to make common sense decisions on how to protect us all from further, further spread. So go hiking, go camping, but do it locally. The success of these travel restrictions will take the cooperation of all British Columbians. As with previous measures, this is an all hands on deck approach. To help ensure this order is effectively enforced and communicated, the province is working with the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure on highway signage and installing new signage on bo at the border. 
BC Ferries on restricting non-essential vehicle passage, deterring non-essential bookings and limiting sailings. Tourism and accommodation industry leaders on strongly encouraging all operators and businesses to support the order by declining new bookings from outside their region and cancelling their out-of-area bookings. BC Parks to inform the public about restrictions and refund bookings where necessary. ICBC to contact their customers who have booked road tests outside their health authority and offer them another booking within their own region if appropriate. And police departments on enforcement measures. Over the coming days, we will continue working with police to establish additional measures to ensure they have the necessary authority to conduct periodic roadside checks like the counterattack program at strategic points into and out of the defined regions. At that time, a contravention of this order may be subject to a $575 fine. The provisions of this order recognize reasonable exemptions to travel restrictions, such as going to work, going to school, the commercial transportation of goods, returning to a principal residence, obtaining health care. And a full list of exemptions is available in the news release and on the COVID-19 website and in the order itself. Our top priority is to keep British Columbians, particularly our most vulnerable people, healthy and safe. We know this virus needs people to transmit and that people traveling outside their communities increases COVID-19's ability to spread. The surest path to the success of these measures is voluntary compliance. If a friend or family member is planning to break the rules, let them know that now is not the time to travel. Help spread the word. I know British Columbians are strong. Vaccines are rolling out and we will get through this. We just need to hold the line, follow the guidance of the provincial health officer, and do the right thing. Thank you. A reminder to reporters on the line, please press star one to enter the queue. You are limited to one question and one follow-up. For the first question, we go to Binder Sajjan, CTV. Hi, Minister. I'm wondering if you have a definition of non-essential. If somebody, let's say they're the grandmother or grandfather dies in a different health authority, are they able to leave their health authority to go to another one to attend a funeral, for instance? Yes, they are. Um, and in fact, you will see a very comprehensive list of, uh, of what is considered as, uh, essential travel um, that is in the order. Um, this is primarily, it is focused on recreational travel, non-essential travel. That's what it's focused on. Uh, it recognizes that there are essential uh, reasons to travel and they are, uh, they are listed in the order, but the example you gave absolutely would be considered uh, legitimate. And there's another follow-up. Yes, and sorry, we don't have the news release yet, uh, yet, so this may be in there as well, but when you talk about Vancouver Coastal Health and Fraser Health being sort of one health authority, that's a pretty large region. Um, I know the message is to kind of stay local, but uh, there are questions about whether somebody in Vancouver could be traveling to Hope, for instance, um, on the And would these rules apply no matter how you're traveling, for instance, for uh, those on the transit, people who cycle or pedestrians? You, you were breaking up there, but I think I got the, uh, the, gist, the gist of the question. Um, this order uh, is prohibiting travel outside the, uh, the health authority, the health region. So in essence, uh, Fraser, uh, uh, Fraser Health and Vancouver Coastal, the lower mainland. Um, but within that, the guidelines that the provincial health officer has put in place still remain. That advice is don't travel outside your local area. So if you live on the North Shore, um, stay on the North Shore. Uh, if you want to go hiking, then go hike up Grouse Mountain. Hike the trails in that community. If you live in the Tri-Cities, you know Burke Mountain has wonderful trails. Stay in your local area. Um, those still apply. Next question, Katie DeRosa, Vancouver Sun. There is, uh, as you know, been a, a letter from 11 uh, legal and First Nations groups raising concerns about any uh, disproportionate impact on racialized groups. Uh, you said that you've met with some of those groups yesterday. Can you specifically say who you met with and what assurances you gave them that this will not disproportionately impact racialized groups? 
Yeah, no, as I said, I did meet with a number of groups representing racialized communities yesterday. Um, they've asked that that, uh, that 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 be kept confidential in terms of who attended, but I can tell you they raised some uh, very, you know, important concerns from their perspective, and uh, we take those very seriously. It's one of the reasons why we're ensuring that the, the enforcement order uh, around the authority in terms of how, uh, you know, police uh, conduct at the, uh, the periodic uh, uh, COVID road checks uh, that will take place at key points at the borders of the health authorities will operate. That's why we're taking our time to do it, to, to do it right. Uh, but I think you will see from the order today and the exemptions, for example, uh, that, uh, that, that things will be done in a way that is, uh, that, that is equitable and, and respectful to uh, all British Columbians. And our discussions with the police uh, have been very much, they are very much aware of that as well. Katie, do you have a follow-up? Yes, is there specific funding for police departments similar to, uh, you know, integrated road safety units uh, for the counterattack program? Like, will there be specific funding to uh, resource this properly or because police departments are, are wondering where these resources will come from? Absolutely. We fully uh, recognize that uh, this is uh, an initiative uh, related to the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and the uh, the implementation of a provincial health order, and so yes, there uh, there will be uh, uh, provincial monies uh, to in, to uh, to put this in place. Next question, we go to Mike Hager, Globe and Mail. Thank you. Uh, so it looks like the Atlantic Bubble is able um, to enable provinces to police the travel between their borders. Uh, we have police on the highways, Trans Canada stopping uh, people from entering Nova Scotia from New Brunswick. Uh, why can't it work here with Alberta? And when will you release that legal opinion that you uh, referenced? Um, the situation in, in British Columbia is, I would argue, significantly different uh, than that of uh, At Atlantic Canada, uh, the size and the geography uh, of, of our province. Uh, what we are doing is dealing with the, the provincial uh, health order's request to restrict intra-provincial travel. There will be signs uh, and signage at the Alberta border uh, discouraging people uh, from uh, non-essential travel. Uh, we've been working with the tourism um, uh, industry um, to, you know, to, uh, to, to cancel uh, for example, out of uh, province bookings, and they are—they've been working uh, very cooperative, cooperatively with us and doing a terrific job in doing so. So right now, we are doing uh, what's uh, required uh, by the provincial health uh, officer. Do you have a follow-up, Mike? Yes. Will you release the legal opinion that you've referenced um, as to to um, why BC can enable more stringent restrictions at the border? And, and sorry, I just heard you, is that um, all out of province bookings are being cancelled and who's following up, who's auditing that? We are working with the, uh, with the Tourism Association uh, to encourage uh, tourism operators, for example, let's say in the Okanagan, uh, to not accept out of area, out of province bookings uh, and to, uh, to cancel uh, uh, bookings that have already been made. And uh, we are uh, we, we've been we've been pl very pleased with the uh, the response uh, because they recognize uh, that uh, we deal with this now, then they have a greater uh, chance of having uh, the kind of summer that I think all of us in this province want. And as for legal opinions uh, on wh when and how we would release a legal opinion, that is something that uh, uh, I would uh, take up with the attorney general. Next question, Richard Zussman, Global News. Minister, is this an acknowledgement that you could not figure out a way to legitimately stop travel within health authorities like Metro Vancouver, the virus going from Surrey to Chilliwack or from Surrey to Vancouver? Like it just you did it. You couldn't figure out a way to actually crack down on that, which um, and do we know if that contributes more to spread of the virus than this travel outside of larger health regions? Well, I actually uh, disagree with the, the premise of that, that question to this extent. I think what we're acknowledging is the complication that of, of two significant health uh, authorities in the Lower Mainland where people cross back and forth every single day 
um, to work uh, and, the, and the ability to, to police that, for example, or to, 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 to do checks, or it, 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 the resources are not, it's just not practical. Uh, so we took a common sense approach, which is to recognize that that is one health authority. And the reality is this, the bulk of the hotspots are in the lower mainland. And it's to, by, by making the, uh, the, the, the restrictions uh, within a health authority, so don't go from the lower mainland to the interior. That is an eff extremely effective way of stopping the transmission of, uh, of the virus out of hotspots to other parts of the province. Uh, likewise, not going from the lower mainland to the island, again, is the same rationale. Um, and so that's the approach that's, that, that, that's, been, that's been taken, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Richard, do you have a follow-up? I do. There's been a lot of different terms thrown out, stay in your local area, stay in your community. People are confused by this in some regards. And I know we can't go over every single possible thing that people are asking to do, but there's a sense that people can go camping from the city to Chilliwack. You can go play golf from the city to Squamish. Like, are these things that are still okay to do because they're outdoor activities? Or, or how do you define your local area or your local community? Well, the uh, the provincial health officer and the guidelines to date uh, about local, I think, have been pretty have been pretty clear and pretty straightforward. That is, if you really have to ask, should I go out to Chilliwack? The answer is no, you shouldn't. Uh, if you live in Vancouver, um, it's if as I said earlier, if you live in the, on the North Shore, that's your local area. Stay in that area. I live in the Tri Cities. Um, I'm not going to be going uh, to White Rock as much as I might as much as I might want to. I'm staying in the in the Tri Cities. If I live in Surrey, that's my local area. Um, you know, if you um, are on the North Shore and you go hiking, you've got you know you've got lots of uh, you got lots of trails and, uh, and, and 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 mountains to do that. Likewise, out my way, um, if you're in Vancouver, you've got Stanley Park. I think most people do understand what their local area uh, what their local area means. Next question, Rob Monroe, Info News. Hi, Minister. I just wondered if you could give us a bit more information on what kind of road checks or roadblocks there will be. Uh, I know you're still working with police on it, but uh, how will these work? Uh, and what is the term that you're using for them? Um, first off, the information on that will be coming out, uh, the detailed information on that will be coming out uh, next week. But uh, what I want to stress, it is not uh, arbitrary or random, um, and it's not roadblocks. What it is is, is periodic um, road checks, similar to what you see with the counterattack program at, uh, at key points, uh, strategic points, if you like, at the borders between uh, health authorities. So in the case of the Lower Mainland and Northern and Interior Health, for example, that, that combined area, it would be, you know, Highway 1 just before it t turns into uh, the Canyon Route, uh, the Coquihalla, or the Hope Princeton. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, the approach that's, uh, that, that's being considered and taken. And I'll have uh, further information on that uh, uh, later next week. Rob, do you have a follow-up? Yes, I'm wondering if there would be any fines for out-of-province people coming in. And also in terms of um, not taking the bookings, are Airbnbs uh, cooperating with this or had any discussion with them? Um, could you just repeat that first part of your question, please? I didn't quite, didn't quite get that. Are, if someone's coming in from Alberta, will they be uh, subject to the fine for being outside you know, so, their area or their local okay. health area? Um, certainly, um, if you're coming into British Columbia from Alberta, um, and then you decide to, that you're going to, uh, to you know, we're going to now go to Vancouver. Uh, no, uh, you, you, potentially could get, uh, you potentially could get a fine. Uh, the fines that we've outlined today uh, are $575, uh, and that uh, that's, uh, will be in the, in the order as well. Next question, Tanya Fletcher, CBC News. So you keep saying these road checks will be like the drunk driving counterattacks, but the RCMP union expressed concern about that, saying it's much different. With the counterattacks, police are checking for specific criminal activity, whereas this is much more open to interpretation. It can be subjective. It's ambiguous. And they say it's a line they don't want to cross. So uh, the National Police Federation 
say they wrote you a letter raising these concerns. They asked to meet with you before today. Did you meet with them, and did you make any changes to satisfy those concerns? Um, we've received a letter, and no, I have not met with them, but what I can tell you is this. We have been working very closely with uh, uh, the police, the RCMP here in British Columbia, uh, and uh, the chiefs of police on how uh, the, the order uh, can work and how the, uh, the process will work. And we're very mindful of the issues uh, that, uh, that the public has raised. That's why I've said that the details on the order uh, will be uh, made uh, next week. And do you have a follow-up, Tanya? Yes, thanks. And what about private bookings like Airbnb? You know, many are desperate for those tourism dollars. Will there be any way to monitor or enforce perhaps under-the-table reservations that could still see people, especially from other provinces, coming here when they shouldn't be to stay? We are working with the, uh, the tourism uh, industry uh, very closely on these kinds of issues. Um, but my message would be this. Uh, I understand that uh, if you're Airbnb relying on, uh, on, on you know, the business uh, uh, for, your, for, your, for your place, uh, and I, obviously it's, it's clearly as important, now is not the time to uh, encourage people to come out to, uh, to British Columbia. If you want to have a long-term viability, understand that these uh, health restrictions, these travel restrictions, have been, in pla have been put in place for just this reason. We get this virus under control. We get the population vaccinated, so going from 30% today to 60% uh, by the May Day long weekend, then all of a sudden that starts to have a significant impact uh, in terms of hospitalizations and caseloads and the pressure on our healthcare system. And that will allow us then to have the kind of summer that tourism operators, including Airbnb types, want to have to ensure a long-term viability of their business. Next question, Les Lane, Times Colonist. Oh, thanks. Minister, why do we have to wait till later this next week for details on a major move that you said just took effect instantly today? That seems like a long time to wait for something that's important. I want to make sure that it's done right. I want to make sure that we address the concerns that people have. I want to make sure that, that, that the order that is in place, which takes place under uh, Section 10 of the Emergency uh, Program Act, is the right one. And I, I want us to avoid the situation, for example, that happened in Ontario. Uh, so we're working with police very closely uh, and ensuring that what comes out is what's right. And do you have a follow-up, Les? I'm just picturing the checkpoints. And do you think this is going to boil down to police pulling over anybody in an RV or a camper or with a canoe on top. I can't see them interrogating every single traveler about their reasons for travel. That's why, as I said, the details on the order will be coming out next week. But the bottom line is this. This is about discouraging travel, unnecessary travel, common sense, uh, ensuring that people know what, uh, what is going to be taking place. That's why it's being brought in now. That's why there's a sunset clause that it will expire after the 25th of May, after the May long weekend. It's about reminding people that if we take this action now, that we don't travel outside our, uh, our health region, like outside of the lower mainland to the interior, from the lower mainland to Vancouver Island, um, then you know what? Come the summer, we'll be in a much better place where you hopefully will be able to travel like we used to. We have time for one more question. We'll go to Camille Baines, Canadian Press. Hi, Minister. You mentioned there will be consequences, and the Premier also said the same thing. Uh, what will those consequences be? So, for example, on uh, the ferry, you could be, uh, you know, denied your, uh, ju denied your booking. But as announced today, there will be a fine. There is a fine, the potential of a fine, uh, for $575. Camille, do you have a follow-up? Yes, thank you. We know that most people haven't paid their fines so far uh, for other infractions during the pandemic. What makes you think that this is going to be a deterrent? Well, um, 
first off, uh, we do uh, live in a, a democracy where people do have administrative fairness when it comes to, to fines. So people do have the ability to fight uh, and dispute uh, a ticket that they receive. The way the current process works is if after 30 days you've not disputed the ticket, you are deemed to be guilty, and then that is forwarded to a, a collection agency uh, for follow-up and collection. I have also indicated that it is my intention within the next few weeks, uh, we're currently in session, that I will be uh, introducing legislation that will allow for further uh, 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 debt collection uh, measures to be taken to ensure that all fines that are, that are issued under COVID-19 will in fact be collected and paid. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you everyone. That concludes today's event.